Okay, let's continue our discussion for Module 2 on Ultimate Bank Capacity for Shallow Foundation Special Case. We move on now to bearing capacity of layered soils. Stronger soil underlain by weaker soil. So, we have to take note that the bearing capacity equation that was presented previously, the soil supporting foundation is homogeneous and extends to a considerable depth. So there were uh, the equation angle of friction, the unit weight are assumed to remain constant for the bearing capacity analysis. analysis. However, in practice, you have to take note that layered soil profiles are often encountered. So meaning to say, in 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 our in the, in reality, uh, the soil is not homogeneous. It will not have the same uh, shear strength parameters. There would be cases wherein you are going to construct. Uh, a foundation you're going to cons you're going to construct a structure in the foundation will be constructed on layered soil meaning to say uh, the upper surface can be a stronger soil the lower surface can be a weaker soil or vice versa it can be the upper top layer is weaker soil and the lower top layer is a stronger soil so in such instances the failure surface at ultimate load may extend through two or more soil layers and a determination of the ultimate bearing capacity in layered soil can be made in only a limited number of cases. So for this one, uh, this section, uh, it will be going to outline the procedure for estimating the bearing capacity for layered soil. So for this one, uh, this is the bearing capacity of layered soil, stronger soil underlain by weaker soil. So we have here an illustration for the bearing capacity uh, of a continuous foundation on layered soil. If you're going to observe on this figure, we have here two illustration. Of course, uh, two illustration for a stronger soil on the top and a weaker soil at, at the bottom. So of course, for two layered soil, since you have two layers, they will have different shears. Uh, 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 shear strength parameters or they will have different physical parameters meaning to say at the top and at the bottom they will have uh, different physical parameters such as the unit weight the soil friction angle and the cohesion so there will be a different unit weight on the top on the stronger soil and a different unit weight on the bottom which is the weaker soil they can also they will have also different soil angle of friction as well as cohesion for this illustration, we have two illustrations. Uh, you have figure A and figure B. Uh, for this one, uh, if you're going to observe at a certain ultimate load per unit area, the failure surface in soil uh, is shown in this figure. So the first illustration, figure A, it illustrates if the depth H, this is our H, is relatively small compared to the foundation width. B, this is our the width of the foundation, a punching shear failure will occur in the top soil layer followed by a general shear failure in the bottom soil layer. So meaning to say for this illustration A, figure A, the our the depth uh, the depth of our uh, the depth H which is the distance from the um, base of the foundation towards the surface of the weaker soil is relatively small compared to the width of the foundation B, there will be a punching shear failure that will occur on the top soil which is the stronger soil and it will be followed by a general shear failure on the weaker soil. So it, this is the illustration for that condition. For figure B, this is an illustration wherein our H, the distance, our H is which is the distance from the base of the foundation towards the ground surface of the weaker soil is uh, relatively high compared to the width B of the foundation. So for this one, the failure surface will uh, completely be located on the top layer soil which is the upper limit for the ultimate bearing capacity. So meaning to say the failure zone will not uh, extend to the weaker soil if you're going to have H which is relatively high compared to the width of the foundation. The failure zone will only uh, be located on the stronger soil. It will not extend on the 
weaker soil. So this is the illustration for that condition uh, which is illustrated in figure B. So the ultimate bearing capacity for the problem that is shown in this figure A is given by this equation. So to compute for the ultimate bearing capacity for the condition or the scenarios uh, illustrated in figure A, you can compute the ultimate bearing capacity using this equation. So of course, you have the width of the foundation, which is our B. You have the adhesive force. Adhesive force, of course, is of A, that is the attraction of the soil to the solid material, of course. Then you have P sub P, which is the passive force per unit length of the phases A. So our passive force is this one. We talk about passive force that is one of the nature of the lateral earth pressure and its movement is towards the uh, towards the soil. And of course, you have the Q sub B, which is the bearing capacity at the bottom layers of the soil. So Q sub B is the bearing capacity of the bottom layer, which is our weaker soil. And angle, uh, this one is small letter delta, inclination of the passive force, P sub P with the horizontal. So it, this is our, uh, angle of inclination of the passive of the passive force with respect to the horizontal so uh, of course our is of a adhesive force given by this uh, equation so you can also uh, uh, this equation can be written if you try to substitute one uh, some of the uh, values for the parameters here it can be expressed that the ultimate bearing capacity is given by this expression and you have now the presence of case of pH which is the horizontal component of passive earth pressure coefficient and that one is equivalent to this we have your case of a, a case a case of s which is our uh, punching shear coefficient and basically our ultimate bearing capacity now is given by this expression so this is now the ultimate bearing capacity for uh, computation uh, if you're going to have the uh, figure in illustrated in figure a so our uh, punching shear failure case of s is a function of the ratio between q sub 2 and q sub 1 and the angle of friction q sub 2 and q sub 1 those are the ultimate bearing capacity of a continuous foundation under a vertical load on the surfaces of homogeneous thick beds of the upper and lower soil. So Q1 refers to the upper ultimate bearing capacity on the upper soil, Q2 to the ultimate bearing capacity of the lower soil. And this has the presence of the bearing capacity factors and it can be uh, obtained through our table that was presented in our previous chapter. So this one is to find the value for uh, the value for case of S, so and you have to know the angle of friction and of course the ratio between Q sub 2 and Q sub 1. This one is an illustration or a figure for the variation of C sub A prime all over C sub 1 with Q sub 2 over Q sub 1. So these are based on the, this figure are based on the theory of Mayer of and Hanna. So if the uh, to compute for the ultimate bearing capacity for located in the stronger upper soil. So as illustrated in figure B, so figure B if you want if you're going to have that case illustrated in figure B to compute for the ultimate bearing capacity, you have this equation. So of course we know that figure B, the failure zone only occur on the stronger upper soil layer. It, the failure zone doesn't extend to the lower uh, weaker soil. So for this one, we have the presence of course of your bearing capacity factor and it can be obtained through our table that was presented before in the previous discussion. And of course for Q, this is the effective surcharge given by this formula. So now you can have your ultimate bearing capacity can be expressed in this form and this expression should satisfy that it should be less than or equal to Q sub T. Uh, we have the presence of QB that is the bearing capacity at the bottom soil. Q sub T is the bearing capacity on the top soil. So specifically, if you're going to have a rectangular foundation 
So this is the formula for rectangular foundation. It should be less than or equal also to Q sub t. And you have the presence for the bearing capacity of the bottom soil. This is the formula that you're going to use for the bearing capacity at the top soil. This is the formula that you will be using. Of course, you have the presence of the shape factors with respect to the top layer, and you have the shape factors with respect to the bottom layer. So one, subscript one refers to the top layer, subscript two refers to the lower layer. So you have special cases, top layer is strong soil and bottom layer is saturated clay. So this is the equation to compute for the bearing capacity at the bottom and the bearing capacity at the top of the soil. And you have the ultimate bearing capacity to compute for that particular uh, case. And you have to have the ratio between Q2 and Q1 given by this formula. And the top layer is stronger sand and the bottom layer is a weaker sand. So the ultimate bearing capacity is given by this equation. It should be less than or equal to Q sub t. Of course, Q sub t, bearing capacity at the top layer, you have this equation, the ratio between Q2 over Q1, the ultimate bearing capacities at the bottom layer over the top layer is given by this expression. And you can express that in this manner. So, so basically for undrained cohesion, you are going to have, to have this uh, relationship. So you have a sample problem you are given with. Uh, you're going to consider a continuous foundation having a width is 2 meters. Depth of embedment is 1.2. H is 1.5. The fun, Of course, you know where H is located from the base of the foundation towards the uh, top of the second layer soil the following are given for these two layers so you have the physical parameters for our top sand layer and the physical parameters for our bottom clay layers determine the gross ultimate load per unit length of the foundation so you have to identify your end of ends of gamma so that is 109.41 the ratio between q2 over q1 you have to solve that one and Having these parameters, you can so you can identify your case of S2.5 from the figure 4.8 shown a while ago. And you can compute now for the ultimate bearing capacity and it was 282.6 kN per meter squared. So based on that, it should satisfy that Q sub U, the ultimate bearing capacity, is less than or equal to Q sub T. This is your Q sub T. Having these values for Q sub T, you have now bearing capacity factors, N sub gamma and sub Q. Simply have to substitute to our shape factors, substitute to, substitute that one to Q sub T, and Q sub T now is 3262.7. So Q sub U is, you're going to use Q sub U is 282.6 kN per meter squared because it, is, it should satis it satisfy the condition that Q U should be less than or equal to Q of t since Q of t is greater than Q of u and Q of u of course is smaller than Q of t it satisfy our condition so you're going to utilize Q of u which is 282.6 kN per meter squared and you can compute now for the gross ultimate load you multiply Q of u times our uh, our b which is 2 so we are given now with uh, you're going to multiply with the area, of course. So you're going to consider uh, one meter uh, per unit length of the foundation. So meaning to say, uh, Q sub U ultimate gross load, you're going to have Q sub U ultimate bearing capacity times the area since you're considering one per unit length. So this would be width times one. So that is 282 0.6 times 2, so you have 565.2 kN per meter. So that ends for our second uh, concept for the ultimate bearing capacity for, uh, for shallow foundation special case.